Welcome back. You're listening to Washington Watch. I'm Tony Perkins, your host, and the website, TonyPerkins.com. Programs are archived there, other resources available for you, and increasingly, that's the real estate we're going to encourage you to visit. Um, Religious speech, religious broadcasters, do they have anything to be concerned about with this uh, new left that is intolerant toward free speech. Well, join me now to talk about this, Craig Parshall, special counsel for the American Center for Law and Justice and former attorney with the National Religious Broadcasters. Craig, welcome uh, back to Washington Watch. Thank you, Tony. So do religious broadcasters have anything to be concerned about in the days ahead? Uh, Unfortunately, I think they do, and I'm glad that you're spotlighting this. Uh, it wasn't too long ago uh, when, uh, under Bill Clinton, he attempted to get one of the federal agencies to devise a definition for hate speech so that they could enforce it against certain radio and television broadcasters. That fell flat when the agency, after I don't know, a year or so worth of work and who knows how much public money, was unable to come up with an accurate definition of hate speech. By the way, as you know, Tony, they still can't come up with it. It's because it's been used basically as a bludgeon against conservatives. Exactly. Uh, in other words, it's speech you don't. It, it's speech you hate. It's not hate speech that they're worried about. Uh, then, under President Obama, there were uh, some suggestions in the FCC about you know, enforcing community standards on radio broadcasters, where they have to bow in terms of their content to some local commission that would be put together and then would weigh in on whether or not they agreed with the content of the broadcaster. Now, that would have been clearly violative of the First Amendment, rights of uh, radio and television broadcasters, but uh, the Obama administration seemed unfazed. That failed to gain traction, but it was threatened. And there have been threats uh, for the last several decades uh, with regard to the vague uh, public interest requirement that every radio and television broadcaster under FCC regulations must describe to. It's never really been um, specifically defined. It's always been a test about whether or not there's certain value uh, to the public in terms of news and information and so forth. But uh, it is a tool that can, the left can use to crack down on conservative talk uh, in particular. I mean, we all know what happened with the Fairness Doctrine. Right. Uh, as soon as the Fairness Doctrine, which was entirely unfair, was dismantled under the Reagan administration, we suddenly had the uh, creation of talk radio as a phenomena, and we've enjoyed it ever since. Yeah, let, let me go back there for just a moment, because uh, I think the Fairness Doctrine is very instructive, because oftentimes... You know, we have short frames of reference, and we go back to the the communist era, the 1950s, and the Fairness Doctrine was used to silence a number of um, conservative religious broadcasters. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, Craig, correct me if I'm wrong, that's really what gave rise to the National Religious Broadcasters as an organization. Yeah, in fact, yeah, yeah, in in fact, at least, uh, let's see, it would have been uh, two decades before the Fairness Doctrine arose, private uh, broadcasting companies, there were only a handful back in the 40s, uh, unlike today, and they controlled all the airways, both radio and television. And they decided, no, we're not going to have Christian uh, gospel preaching uh, people on the, uh, on the air, no matter how much money they want to pay for, uh, you know, pay for place time on uh, radio and television. So they decided to give it uh, over to an independent religious council that was uh, then going to decide whether you and I would have a voice on Christian orthodoxy issues. Uh, That was really the rise of the National Religious Broadcasters. Well, then we had the rise decades after that with the Fairness Doctrine, and the only person ever charged and convicted under the penalties of the Fairness Doctrine was a Christian broadcaster um, who they believed had stepped over the line and had not uh, hewed to the requirements of, you know, reasonable equivalent time to opposing viewpoints and so forth. Uh, now, we've been blessed with talk radio since the 80s on both sides, but you and I both know conservative talk has flourished because it goes to the heart of the right. American people. Right. Most people have these traditional values. They want to hear opinions about that, not the left-wing, left-coast stuff 
uh, that really doesn't get much traction. So just the, the attacks are going to come. Um, but, you know, there I would argue today there are there there is more Christian programming out there today than there was 40, 50 years ago when it was attacked. And the uh, those that think they will stop the truth, they will keep the gospel from going out. I got news for them. They never win. Yeah, they, sh- they don't win, and yet that doesn't keep them from trying. And you just wonder, what is the motivation? Uh, by not having an open marketplace of all otherwise lawful ideas, you know, you and I and the, and the folks that tune into your show, Tony, you know, they don't advocate um, uh, lawless action. They don't advocate burning down uh, police departments and uh, setting fire to churches, okay? The, these are not the acts that uh, conservative Christians believe in. Uh, and yet we have been marked, for some reason, uh, as the enemy, uh, maybe p- because we oppose, uh, you know, the idea that the state is, you know, uh, superior to God. Uh, well, the state is not God. We believe in a God <laughs> that is sovereign over the creation of the providential creation of of our constitution and our founding of our nation and we've enjoyed and reaped the benefits ever since but there are those who simply believe they have a better plan and they need to tell us that we are better off under their soft totalitarian hand than we are with liberty well i would uh, i would say if we're mischaracterized in our intentions and our actions we're in good company because you remember what they called jesus they called him the prince of demons Um, And so they are going to mischaracterize, (laughs) and they're going to lie, and they're going to be filled uh, with, um, well, as you said earlier, when you talked about hate speech, it's it's the hate that they have toward the truth. We just need to speak the truth in love. So the the battles are going to come. We just have to be resolute and unyielding in the fact that we're going to continue to speak truth, overcome the obstacles, Seek the, uh, the, the face of God and his power and his strength to, uh, to sustain us in what is, you know, most probably going to be a very challenging chapter in the history of our country. Yeah, no, no question about it. But as you pointed out, the Great Commission is called great for a reason. Uh, when the Apostle Peter got arrested unlawfully, dragged in before the council in Jerusalem, he said, look, you can do whatever you want to with me, but I can't stop talking about what I have seen and heard right. in terms of the Savior, because I walk with him. We have the same commission today. Right, and that's the resoluteness that we need. No matter what you're going to do to me, no matter what you're going to call me, I'm not going to be quiet. Craig Parshall, thanks for the work you do, and uh, thanks for joining us today. Thanks much, Tony.